Right, I wish someone had told me these things at the start of my journey. <laughs> Here are 10 things that I have learned, literally the most important 10 things that I have learned in my freelancing journey. It's been two years and I've been a full-time freelancer during that time. So let me start off with number one, social media. Now, if you've been following my channel long enough, you know that I will have spoken about this so, so many times. Although many may disagree, you don't need social media to actually grow your photography business. You don't need it at all. I've never generated a single lead from social media. However, if you're wanting to become a bit of a pioneer in your photography niche, in your industry, that there is a whole different story. So say if you want to grow in any of those ways, social media is crucial and the way that you will achieve this. So in a situation like that, I am 100% on board because that is essentially what I did as well. If you are to start anything at all, remember that consistency is key 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 and trust me you will get there it'll be very frustrating but you will you will get there so yes that is my little word on social media moving on to number two don't charge an hourly rate now if someone's gonna say all right well how about the saying time is money i couldn't agree more with that saying however i think charging an hourly rate puts an enormous amount of pressure on you. And really a lot of the times you don't give yourself much room for error. And sometimes if you are to go over that allotted time, you're not getting paid for that because the client will be like, well, I only decided to pay for three hours. Always charge per project. Of course, when it comes to save restaurant photography, you can charge per half day or per full day. I do tend to include hours during that, but I say like eight to 10 hours for like a full day or say for a half day, I say like four to five. So you give yourself a bit a breathing room there but as well you're still charging for the full project i definitely wouldn't charge an hourly rate even if you're just starting out and you're that's what you're wanting to do i think it's a recipe for disaster and i think a lot of the times it does end in tears between not only yourself but the client as well so if you can get anything from this video don't charge an hourly rate, charge per project. Number three, initial payments. This was by far the hardest lesson that I learned and I only started implementing it at the beginning of this year, believe it or not, scenes. After realizing that I'd made a bit of a silly mistake and was getting no payment out of a two month project job until the very end, once all the photos and deliverables were sent over to the client and completed, I realized I was really, really losing out because of this. So I decided to charge a 50% upfront fee with the remainder to be paid once the project was completed. This really, really changed a lot of things for me, not only in terms of finances, but also gave me a bit of a motivation. It also makes you trust the client a bit more because you think, right, they've made the initial payment and they will most likely 99% of the time make the second payment if they've made the first one. It sort of doesn't leave you in an uncomfortable and awkward situation either. So I would definitely recommend you start doing that. Number four, contracts are a must. I mean, if I could get everyone to send out a contract, I would. Please don't think that you never need one. I mean, if you're not sending out contracts now to protect you and your work, please, please start doing it. It's so important. Remember, you have to have your own back always. No one else is going to have it. It's just you. So please protect yourself by using a contract. Number five, trust your gut. This applies to either when I have a good feeling about a client or feel massive red flags towards them before working with them or even in certain situations. Trusting my gut has never failed me, so make sure that you trust yours. Number six, keep your taxes in mind. Oh my gosh, I can't, I get stressed speaking about this. At the start, when I was really stressed about money and really stressed about where's my next client gonna come in and I was very much living paycheck to paycheck, I was genuinely just worried like, how am I gonna pay my bills? How am I gonna pay my rent? And I wasn't setting any money aside to pay for my taxes. I wasn't tracking expenses, you name it, complete shambles, yes, I was there. I am no accountant by any means, please go and speak to your accountant about this. But what I do and what I would really recommend you doing is putting 20% aside of any money coming in because not only does that sort of cover you but it really really helps you with any sort of last minute stress when you're having to submit your taxes. Remember that us self-employed people have to put everything in as a lump sum so the money does add up and it's v-stressful so make sure that you sort of look after that and don't neglect it like I did. Number seven, practice, practice, practice. A bit of a no-brainer but seriously a lot of people actually just completely disregard this and it is so important to keep practicing and keep working on your craft no matter how confident you might actually be in it. No seriously, practice every day, it will make a big big difference. Number eight, learn as much as you can. Every day is a school day and there is so much 
much to learn no matter what it is that you do. Learning something new about your craft or about your industry will also allow you to think outside the box and this is point number nine. This could be with how you approach your work, how you approach your clients, where to find clients or even how to better your business. And lastly, the most important one, believe it or not, put yourself first always, no matter what, your mental health is so important and without you as a freelancer, your business sadly can't run. So make sure to always, always look after yourself and just, I mean, most people become freelancers because they want more freedom, they want more time. So really remember that because at the end of the day, you don't want to feel like you're working all the time. You've really just got to carve time out of the day to look after you and do the things that make you happy. But I say this all the time because seriously, it's so, so true rest is productive. So just remember that if you ever feel guilty because you're not working all the time, just remember rest is productive and you'll probably come back to your work day the next day feeling refreshed, happier, and just ready to get to work. So remember all these things together will make your business just really, really shine. Thank you so much for watching as always. If there are any tips that I didn't mention that have really improved you and impacted your business, please let me know in the comments below. You know, I always love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching again. I really, really appreciate it and I will see you very soon.